Welcome back to Italia Demo for episode 13 with me, Mr. Sealy P. It's late, and good old Mr Murphy and his law has decided to step in and help. Um, as you've just seen, we did finish doing the bailing contract, I, I did in the end take, uh, on field 48. We got paid all right, we only had about 15 grand. I ended up with five, five extra bales, so all that work for five extra bales. But I say we made money on it, so that was okay. But here's where Mr Murphy steps in. The bottom half that we had all the weeds across there that line and I went out and weeded that section while I was doing field 48 I don't know what time it got to it must have been about 10 o'clock and all of a sudden the northern part of the map decided oh it's time for weeds now <laughs> it hasn't hit field one yet um, but 19 and 18 the rest of that needs doing as does 10 11 12 and 13 now 14 does show someone asked about that the other day that does show as me owning it um but that's because there's i've got the um uh, cns Anne marie little silo on there um I, I technically i don't own that i mean i don't own 18 and 19 they're, they're not owned by me either to be fair um so yeah i'm gonna have to go out now in the dark and weed everything because if I leave it and overnight it goes onto the next growth stage I'm not going to be able to mechanically weed and because I'm trying to go for organic crops because in that way I can fulfill any contracts if I go normally then I can't do any organic co contracts but if I do it this way I can do all of them it's you know yes it would be quicker if I used chemical fertilizer uh, uh, herbicide but in all honesty uh, I'm assuming the train has stopped somewhere nearby or it's about to come through. Huh? That's weird. Oh, you shouldn't do this. You shouldn't do what I'm about to do. Don't do this at home, kids. I'm sure I mentioned this a while back. I read an article about this. And it was terrifying. 
um, in a lot of rural places in the UK, not everywhere, but where there are railway lines, they have automated ones of those, or ones that um, farmers have a, like an access to it. So when you, oh there you get, there it is. So, so when you get to it, um, you press a button and the barrier is open. If there's a train coming, it won't open. And a guy in, uh, I think it was New Holland, um, got down to one of the barriers. The barrier opened, so he drove out across the tracks and a train came through. And the picture in, in um, I think it might have, was it Farmer's Weekly or Red? I'm trying to think now. The picture basically was, the engine was gone. <laughs> it was just the cab back. If it had been another foot forward, it'd be dead. It was, it was horrific. Um, yeah, just, just the cab back. The engine, front axle, everything was gone. Just terrifying. So I shouldn't really have done that, but... Normally, if the, if the be, if that's going like ding 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 ding, and the train will come past in, in minutes, well not minutes but moments. If it hasn't come past in moments, chances are it stopped somewhere. Now I've got to try and find out where the weeds are here. They're supposed to be across all of that. Oh right, in a little bit. I wonder why it's not all the way around the edges, or is that going to appear later on? Where? Ah oh, right, hang on. There we go. There's our. The pesky little blighters, look. So, I'm going to crack on with this. Um, once this is done, I'll probably won't see you now until the morning. This is going to be interesting, isn't it? Right, let's go. I'll make sure I catch them all. Where's the edge? Sounds like Pokemon, doesn't it? <laughs> Poker weeds. Got to catch them all. <sighs> Nothing like a bit of night time weeding, is it? Have a quick check on the map. Yeah, we're clearing. That's good. Then once I've done a couple of strips round, then I'll uh, see if I can entice a worker out of bed to help. Alright, that whole section's done, because that's the south, the south section. Don't go south of the river, son. Them boys is naughty. Why have I missed a bit? Oh, there it is. I can see it. Right. So what we'll do, let's swing back around. I can find the edge of the weedage. Which might be about... So we're pointing that way. Got weeds out to, oh, okay, all the way out to here. That's the line about there. Are we in line with it? No, it's come over to you. That's a little bit more, I think. Check again. Still missed a spot somehow. There we go. Right then. It's just gone 7.30 in the morning. I'm here at the train station. For a reason. I've been picking up some containers. These are all, they're gonna become clear. They are clear. Uh, but all will become clear regarding these as we get over to the farm. Uh, last night's weeding fiasco. <laughs> well, it wasn't a fiasco, it was just weeding. It just needed to be done, didn't it? Uh, if we go across to our soil composition... Well, yeah, I mean, it doesn't really show up very well now. But the weeds are all gone from 19 and 18. All gone from 10, 11, 12 and 13. Obviously, one didn't appear. We've got um, poplar in there. And then after a certain amount of time, they just all disappeared from all the other fields anyway. So I'm assuming all the other farmers in the area sorted all their stuff out. Which is very nice indeed. We're going to be heading back to the main farm. We have a contract regarding these. Now, I'm not buying my harvester at the moment because none of my crops are ready to harvest. All the stuff I've planted is still growing. The horses are going to need exercising today. 
I've been round and I've cleaned all the feed areas for the well our single sheep. I'm I am really sorry to the person somebody sent me a contract regarding some extra sheep. I think I've gone the wrong way, haven't I? No, it doesn't matter. Regarding sending me some extra sheep so that Jeremy wasn't on his own. And I can't find it. I I I could have sworn I screenshotted it. I could have sworn I had it to one side. Um, but I can't find it. I'm so sorry. Uh, but the one, I want, well, the two I wanted to talk about uh, to start off with is uh, one from Zach Schultz, uh, the C uh, CEO of the BGO, BGA. Too many letters. Um, it says, "I'm Zach Schultz from your local BGA. We are reaching out to all local farmers. I should have done this one the other day. I should have mentioned this, and I forgot. Uh, we reached out to all local farmers to buy into the BGA cooperative. Green energy demand is at an all-time high, and we need your help." I look forward to discussing possible regular long-term deliveries and on occasion emergency deliveries. We offer a few extra incentives over your uh, traditional BJ. Looking forward to hearing back from you soon. Now, as it stands at the moment, um, all of the grass I put into the BJ, which you also saw a little clip of me uh, finishing off, that's all now been compacted. It has been covered and it is fermenting and it's not far off being ready. But that's not the contract, not, not the reason why I did the initial contract. I forgot I had this one. So what will happen is we will put all of our silage into the BGA. That will produce gas, which is what Zach Schultz needs. The BGA needs product in there. They need to be producing gas because the energy demand locally is very high. So that will kind of fulfill that one, which is absolutely wonderful. That's what we need. Um, the one that I was actually uh, doing the job for, and I can't find it, which I'll find it in just a second, I shouldn't be reading my text and driving at the same time. Just bear with me a second. <laughs> if you know what I mean. Um, I've lost it. Oh yeah, that was it. Dear sir, my name is Harry and I work at Starless Limited. Now I don't remember if I, remember if I mentioned this one. Uh, we're a family run business and I've been, and have been for the last 60 years. We make and distribute digestate to our clients. Unfortunately, due to the passing of my father last year and the pandemic, the business has slowed massively. As a result, we are slowly going out of business. Now the pandemic has begun to lift slightly and everything is starting to get back to normal, I want to give the business a boost of life and keep the family business going. I've managed to get a couple of new clients and have made some promises that are probably a bit out of my reach. I know that, I keep doing that. I'm desperate to get this back to the strong and striving company it was under my father. I'm writing to you to see if you would be kind enough to help us make Digestate and deliver it to the local vehicle shop, which I'm sure we can do, uh, where our delivery driver, it's going to be tight, our delivery driver will meet you to collect it. Uh, we are short of 64,000 litres and need it as soon as possible. I know it's a lot to ask, we'd be happy to offer you the loan of two of our AJ Tech MKU32 tanker trailers. I'm sure we can lease a tanker trailer. Uh, and as a thank you for help and support, we would be happy for you to keep one in return of payment. Okay, it's very kind of you. Um, gratefully yours, Harry from Starless Limited. Um, so that was the one I initially thought, you know, we need to get 64,000 litres. Um, with all the, the um, grass I put in there and compacted, we shouldn't have a problem. We should be fine with that. And then obviously, Zach's contract then is a happy kind of not coincidence because I needed to do the biogas contracts or I wanted to do the bios, biogas contracts that kind of solves that problem at the same time which is lovely um, which brings me on to the contracts I'm looking at now did that did that sign just come up did you see that it just said biogas plant is done fermenting what are the odds I was literally just talking about that Anyway, the contract I'm doing now, the reason why I've got these clear reusable pallets. Uh, good morning, Miss Silly P. Jamsey Animal Feed Limited have found a new method of producing premium horse feed. If you're able to supply us with 4,500 litres of wheat, barley and oats and two straw bales, we will be able to produce 23,200 litres of premium horse feed pallets, which can be delivered when you require it. We are based in the neighbouring valley. We will be able to supply you with three quiet hitman refillable pallets for your collection at the local, local railway station, which is what we've got. Uh, these will need to be returned to the train station for us to collect them. 
As soon as the feed has been produced, we will have our quiet hitman and branded premium horse feed sent back to your local train station for collection. We look forward to receiving response and completing complete your first order. Now, I'm hoping this is going to work, and I don't think it's going to now. I thought it might. Uh, no, let's do that. It's not going to, is it? That's going to make life really difficult. I thought this would just tip into here, no problem. But it doesn't seem to be registering the pallets. Oh, man. I was so sure that was going to work. Come on. Come on now. No, it just doesn't want to notice it. Uh, I wonder if I can put it into the bucket and tip it in. That's going to be a mess, isn't it? Oh, this is going to work out a lot more difficult than I was hoping. Okay, let's put that to one side for a second. And I've got room at the front to put the pallets, uh, the um, bales on as well. So that should be okay. Anyway, so yes, um, that's what we're going to be doing first, Jamsy. Uh, the biogas plant will get on site later on. I don't know if I'm going to be using a conveyor belt or what. Once our crops are ready, we're going to be getting our new harvester. All oh, right, the money has gone up. That was something I was going to mention. <laughs> the money has gone up a fair amount. That's because last night I had a worker. Um, a Gogol Pop is one of my local workers. He's been helping out. Uh, thank you to him for offering his services as a <laughs> as a local hired worker. And, um, yeah, he's been helping me out. So he, while he was doing some weeding, I went round. You know all those trees all around the different fields where I said they were really driving me mad? Once I started weeding, I got caught up on a couple of them around the field edges and got really frustrated. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to grab that, that wood chipper. I'm going to chip all the trees that are in the way and get rid of them, which I did. And you'll see... In further episodes, when we get to those fields again, you'll see the trees that there are trees missing. Ones that have been a real pain, you know, when you drive under them, there's a lot of tree foliage and you can't see where you're going, or ones where you drive over there under there with a slightly larger trailer and it gets caught on tree branches, or the ones that were just on the field and you had to, you know, just those little and niggly annoying ones. So um, I've got rid of them. And when I sold the wood chips uh, at the on the railway, uh, the money went up, so yeah, we're doing all right. Our poplars are growing. Now, obviously, from the outside, it looks absolutely atrocious, but when we get in a little bit further, we're absolutely fine. And that's my fault because I've got into the habit, and I don't know who else does anyone else do this. I got into the habit, right? When you're harvesting, harvest the headlands first and then harvest. What I've been doing, and I suppose I never should have been doing it, I don't know why, because I've watched plenty of farmers and farming channels. When I'm planting or seeding, I go around and do the headlands first and then do the inner, because it doesn't really matter. You do the inner bit, doesn't matter. But for doing a crop like this, I mean, it does. You shouldn't be driving over the stuff you've seeded. So what you should be doing is going in, doing all your up and down strips, <laughs> get all of those done, but leave a board around the outside. And then when you've done all of those, you then drive around the outside and do your, your border strips to tie it all in, because that's the last thing you do. It's like mopping a floor and mopping yourself into a corner, isn't it? You, you don't go walk back over what you've just mopped. You kind of, you know. So that was the problem. I went around the outside first. And when I hired a worker, the worker was going right back over what I'd already done around the outside. So all of this stuff is really thick around the outside, whereas in the middle we've got nice clean rows. It's just a bit annoying, really. Um, so I've got to see now, will this allow it to tip into the bucket? And if it does, can I cleanly tip the bucket into... Because I'm sort of a real nasty, horrible feeling now. I'm going to have to take each of those off. It's going to be an absolute nightmare. I don't think this is going to work, is it? I will need to work out a way of doing it. But, uh, so aside from all that, <laughs> I've also decided, and this isn't a contract, this is just for me, it's for my own personal enjoyment, Oh, there we go. Now, obviously 4,500 litres of wheat, barley and oats. Wheat and barley isn't too bad at the moment. I must have some stored somewhere else, because that says 31,636, right? But if I go to here, that says 46,822. Oh, hang on. We've got a side over here, haven't we? No. Where is it? There. There. 
I bet all the extras in there. I'm going to have to do a bit of um, marrying up my silos, I think, because I must have some over there as well. That's probably what you start with. Didn't even think of that. Um, what does this hold? 4,000. Okay, I, I say I don't think. Because the problem is the size of the bucket coming side on, I'm going to end up tipping into all three buckets. Into all three containers. So coming that way at it, it's not going to work. I need to come at it from the other way. Maybe I need to swing all these pallets round. That's what I'll do. I'll do them side on. That's going to mean... Where did I leave the forks for this? You know what? I can't remember. Oh! Yes. Flibbity gibbets. That's what we're going to go with. Yeah, I've put these pallets on here wrong, haven't I? I should have done them the other way around and left a gap in the corner, maybe. I'm going to rearrange those. You'll see what I mean. If I can find pallet forks. So I leave them over at the, um, at the horses, maybe. Is that where I left? Potentially. Anyway, uh, what I was saying, I was going to do something for myself, yes, and that was, um, we've got olive trees. I have got a, con a contract for lemon trees for doing limoncella, um, but I haven't got, a, I can't find a mod with lemon trees. The one that says citrus, they're orange. Um, I've been trying to find lemon, maybe that might be on PC. I can't find one, uh, what do we go back to, fruit types. Uh, right here, field 29. 58,704. I'm going to buy it. Because for what I want to do, I need a bit of flat land. And it's got it's this kind of slopes down from the road. And then from about here, over there, that's all flat. I need a, a fairly flat area. And then what I'm going to do is that top section, I'm going to plough that out. And I'm going to put potatoes in that. Because I've got a contract for potatoes. And I've been trying to find a small enough plot that's got... Um, I can put potatoes on. I'm not going to, you know, like I was going to do it in this field here, but that's a lot of potatoes. Uh, I'm going to need to get two straw bales and put those on. That's my bale spikes. That's no good. Yeah, let's see if I can find these forks. I hope I haven't returned them. That's something really annoying. I don't really want to have to bring the forklift all the way over. Of course, I didn't have the pallet forks anymore. Um, I grabbed some CSZ ones. So this is what I meant. I should have put the pallets around this way. So two there, one there, and we can put the bales in the gap here. This kind of quarter, this corner was kind of what I meant. That way, hopefully, <laughs> I can tip into these this way around. Now, like I was starting to say, I was worried because I looked at it and thought, oh, the problem is if I'm getting rid of my oats, I need those for the horses. Well, the whole point of this is producing horse feed, isn't it? So it doesn't matter. <laughs> I don't know why I had this sudden panic. because like, oh, no, what am I going to do? Um, I was going to say, what's going on? Why won't these work? There we go, that's better. So, we'll get our wheat, our barley and our oats into these pallets. We'll fill those up and I'm going to stick two bales in. So what we'll do... Well, it's going in all right, isn't it? Seems to be. We'll need another 500 litres to fill that one. Now I'll do the other two. And we'll go those off. Right, so the other thing I'm going to do is uh, vineyards. I thought, I thought I'd we'll stick a couple of vineyards in. Um, in light of the fact that obviously with the new game coming out in a month, and obviously that's going to be a big part of it. Although, obviously on console at the moment we have placeable vineyards whereas with the new game there's going to be this whole thing like fence lines and stuff where you kind of place it then string it along as far as you want it to go um i'm i'm fascinated to see how that's all going to work um and really excited about it i think it's gonna be absolutely brilliant so we'll we'll see but i thought well, you know what why not i haven't done vineyards since washoe is it washoe nevada i did him might have been so 500 litres of wheat. I'm not going to do this quickly. Anyway. That's way, way more than I need. But I'll put the rest back into the silo. So what I'll do is see in a minute. Once I've got all three commodities in there, then we'll go and put the bales on. Um, and then I'm hoping by the end of the episode we'll get the vineyards in. I'll probably take the lorry over to the um, livestock market 
because um, there's the manure depot there. We'll grab a whole load of manure like we did for over at the olive trees and the greenhouses. We'll take a load and we'll dump it up at the vineyards. Um, I'm just starting to think now. The problem is I'm spread all over the place. So I don't know whether or not we're going to need um, another water barrel. So I didn't really want to get another one. I was hoping I wouldn't have to get another one. Right, that's our 4,500 in there. Because my, at the moment my water bowser is bouncing between uh, the horses, the cows, the sheep, uh, uh, the greenhouses, the olive trees, and then there'll be obviously vineyards. And I thought vineyards would work out perfectly. When we get on to those, we'll talk a little bit more about the grape types we're going to be putting in. I know we can't actually put different grape types in, but it does not hurt to have a bit of a chat. Seeing as we're in Italy, let's, um, let's go a bit more Italian on it, shall we? Right. Those tip tip. Okay. Two bales. I've made sure I've got two of the 5,000 litre bales, not two of the 7,500s. Don't want to be wasting my straw. Well, it's not wasting, is it? We're going to be getting something from it. And then hopefully these two will fit on the gap. In the gap, on the gap. Yeah, it should do, shouldn't it? Then we can get this sent off. That at least is the plan. I'm hoping it's going to work. So this is going to go off to Jamsy G. <laughs> that Jamsy animal feed. And we should get a load of premium horse feed back. You know what? I'm really happy with how that's worked out. I was concerned for a little while that it wasn't going to, but... So let's do strap there. Please work. Why is the strap not working? Is there one there? Yes, there is. Fantastic. I'm gonna leave these sides down because these pallets over over uh, even though the other way around, they went over the sides a little bit, so it was difficult to get them to sit flat. So just by opening the sides of that trailer up a little bit, we are absolutely good to go. So these are gonna head down to back to the railway yard. These will be shipped off to Jamsy Animal Feed. And then we'll, however long it's going to take, and then I'll be able to go and pick up our pallets of uh, premium horse feed. We can take the premium horse feed over and put that, well, over by the horses. And we're good to go with that for a little while. It's an interesting way of doing it. Uh, and then what we'll do, we'll head over to our new field. We'll get our vineyards put in, we'll go and grab some manure, I'll grab the water container, we'll get that done. And then, before we finish the episode, we'll get at least, even if I take over the uh, the little wheel loader with the smaller bucket, we'll get a few loads of silage into the biogas plant. So we'll get digestate production underway, and we'll be fulfilling two contracts, one for Zach and... Uh, yeah, just, just, it's all kind of working. And then hopefully once that's all done, a little bit further forward, and then our crops should be ready to harvest. Uh, like I've got a big core one, I've got a big wheat one to do, and then it's going to be a rolling round because I need to get more crops back into the ground um, because I've got... Now, the only problem I've got at the moment, and apologies to Feldin for this one, the contract I got from Feld Corp originally was because I had every intention of doing digestate because I was going to be doing um, organic crops and uh, Feldcorp got in touch with, with a whole load of stuff I would provide them with and they would provide me with a load of digestate um, the old the placeable or the placeable the digestate bag you could put on the ground and we could fill it up and absolutely fantastic but as it turned out because the cultivator we're using the, the Cambridge roller is aerating the soil and we're getting our fertilising states we're managing to do organic without the need for the digestate so I can still send some stuff off to Feldcorp, absolutely. But I think his were, I think it was three different crops. But it was like 42,000 litres of each, which we haven't had on hand just yet. So, yeah, we'll get onto that too. But like I say, potatoes, I'm going to get in the ground too, because I've got a contract for potatoes. Um, I'm just trying to get as many of them ticked off as I can. Um, I'm also going to go around and make sure that my uh, greenhouses and the olive trees have got their manure and water. So everything's going great there. So I'll probably see you in a minute when 
Oh yeah, I'll bring the lorry over and we'll get a full load of manure. That'll be 40 something thousand litres. We'll take that and we'll dump it on the ground. I mean, I probably don't, again, we probably don't need that much. But if we bought it, and we're gonna, if we're going to do a load and we're going to come and get some, it seems pointless doing a partial load. We might as well do the whole lot. So, these will get... Oh, maybe I should have gone to the other side to load up. Yeah, probably. That was a mistake, wasn't it? This is where we unloaded. We need to load the other side. The other thing I need to do is get over here to this silo. And this was that... This little plot of land... I don't think we started with. It was only about... It was a tiny amount of money, wasn't it? How much was this bit up here? Let's zoom out. Zoom in. It was... 4,872. And that gave us an additional sleep trigger, as well as the one we've got here, our main farm, uh, and a silo. But like I say, I think we've got... There is crop in there, so we need to come and collect all of that at some point. It's an interesting little mix of stuff, isn't it? Premium horse feed, here we come. Excellent, right. Let's go back and grab the lorry. Quarter past nine, we're back at the uh, railway depot. Uh, we are here at the manure pile. Let's buy some manure. Shouldn't be too expensive, he says. So I'm probably not going to need... Oh, I don't know, should I go for a full load or is that just really over the top? I'm sure I did the same thing, didn't I, when I did the greenhouses and the olive trees. I didn't need anywhere near as much as I thought. But then we will get through it. I know I'm talking myself in and out of it. Because, you know, I could say, well, I'll just get 20,000 litres. And then have to come back. Oh, you know what? We'll do 20,000 litres. Yeah, we haven't got to go, go mad, have we? We can always come back and do another load. It's not too much of an issue. So here's my thinking. And I say thinking. <laughs> Hang on, let's look at 20,000, shall we? 20,005, that will do. Can we cover that? No, let's leave that piled up in the middle. And we'll take that to our load. Now, we're in Italy, obviously. So I'm thinking of our grape types. Now, obviously, the vineyard doesn't give you actually give you the choice of grape types, but for the sake of where we are and what we're doing, um, I'm thinking we're gonna go for uh, we're gonna go for a Barolo. We're gonna make a Barolo. So we're gonna use uh, Nebilio, uh, Nebilio? Nebbiolo. Whoops. <laughs> Nebbiolo grape for making Barolo. I, I've only ever had it a couple of times in my life and I do like a Barolo. Um, and then the white grape type, we're going to go for a Muscat Blanca, I think it is. Um, can make a, a Moscato wine, but it's more used for making Asti Spamanti and things like that. Now, I know people that's just a ton of, it's a fake or you know, cheap um, champagne. But other than champagne, it is the most uh, widely sold, by capacity and everything, sparkling wine of any other type. Asti Spamanti. So there you go. So yeah, we're going to go with the Muscat Blanca white grape and we're going to go for the Nebbiolo to make Barolo. That's the plan. Now, of myself, Mrs. City P. Mrs. City P is more of a white wine drinker, but she does, doesn't mind a bit of red every now and again, but she's quite partial to a New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc. But it has to be a Marlborough New Zealand Sauvignon, otherwise it's, you know, that's just her preference, she likes that. Um, I don't really drink white wine, but if I do drink a red, over the years I've had Shirazes and Riocas and Tempranillos and things like that. And I found Riocas can be a bit heavy, but of late, Malbec is my favourite. Uh, an Argentinian Malbec. 
I really do like its kind of um, not soft, but sort of a peppery flavour. Smooth is what I'm looking for. Smooth, but a little bit peppery, and yeah, um, there's one that we get called Aguira Bay. Oh, I love it. So so nice. I don't have wine very often. I'm more of a beer drinker, more of an ale drinker. Um, Mississippi always says I'm much fun. <laughs> Lovely, isn't it? Much funnier when I drink red wine. <laughs> um, but yeah, we do do quite like a bit of Malbec every now and again. But obviously, I know some of those are Italian wines, but obviously, but you know, just thought <laughs> a bit of, a bit more information regarding you know the kind of. I don't want you to think we're lushes. We don't just sit around drinking all the time. It's not like you know whole time I'm recording I've got a bottle sitting next to me or something like that it's not like that at all but as far as beer goes I can go weeks and not have a beer at all um, and then I might have a couple with dinner one night or we might go out for dinner and have a few might go to see my brother and drink a few more than a few but yeah I'm not really a daily kind of you know nothing like that remember kids drink responsibly or possibly don't drink at all. It's entirely your choice. So, we'll get to the field. We'll unload this. Um, actually, before we unload, I suppose putting the vineyards in would be a good idea. We don't have them yet, so putting them in might not be a bad idea. Uh, I've done a little bit of landscaping work in preparation. I've left part of the field. Just trying to think, am I going to be better off going through the bank? I don't know if I can access it from the main road here. Maybe I can. I really want to drive across. You know what? Let's go in from there. So you can just see it behind the trees here. Let's go in from here. I can get to it from there, but I think there's a there's a proper access point. What is it with me and signs today? Well, I did knock it down, so I'm not going to get charged for replacing it, hopefully. Now as far as, um, actually yeah, what did we end up with in here? That's a good point. Uh, let's open up the silo. Bunker silo was opened and we ended up with uh, 335,968 litres. So off of the field that we've been using, Coles grass field and the grass field we bought, we end up with a fair amount of silage there. So when we sell that silage, we should easily get 64,000 litres of digestate that, can, that we can send off. Um, at least I hope we can. Sorry if there's been a break in my concentration. Had a had a visitation. All of my kids decided to appear. <laughs> ones that have moved out, ones that are still here, ones that have been at work. All of them at once. Right, so here's our field. Here's our area. It's probably one of the flattest parts of the entire map I could find. Um, and not too expensive either. So what we'll do... No, thank you. Is... I'm thinking... Well, yeah, we'll do it across here. And there we go. We're in. We're done. I need to do a little bit of landscape, and I think. Well, maybe will we extend the gravelly, muddy bit here? No, probably not. We might leave it as it is. So I think we when I think I've got white grapes at the front, so the must get blanker, and then we've got our. I think did I do it that way round? The Nebbiolo, red grapes behind. And then we've left this plot here. It's where the potatoes can go. Actually, I could plough that a bit bigger. I thought I was going to need more room. So maybe we can make that a little bit bigger. Mind you said that, saying that, having potatoes in that. There'll be plenty of potatoes. I think the contract I've got is only for 10,000 litres. So I think we'll, we'll, we'll easily get that from there. Right, so let's get our vineyard sorted. It wasn't actually as flat as I thought it was going to be. Maybe I should have twisted them a little bit, a bit, a bit of a, at a bit of a better angle. Oh, English, Mr. B. Can you speak it? Apparently not. Let's get these in. We're only going to get the water container. We'll get the water put in. Yeah, I haven't done vineyards in ages. I just thought with the sun rising where it is and going up over and down that side, these would be... Now, obviously, they would be better on a hillside, probably, but unfortunately, because of the nature of these, um, they need to be sat on the flat, which is what I was talking about when I was talking about FS22. It's going to be really cool 
to see how they work and whether or not you've got that ability can you stretch them up hillsides and you know will they be truly you know um kind of placeable anywhere type things now that would be amazing if they are now have i left myself enough room for usual normal vehicles and trailers probably for this oh yeah it's, only, it's fairly short actually i think we'll be all right yeah we'll get in there that out of the way then what I'll do is I'll I suppose what I could do with this a little silo like a little bunker that I can put them in uh, put them in put the manure in maybe over to one side or maybe a shelter or something to put them on put it under so it doesn't dry out too much right let's go and get water I'll get those in that'll be the vineyard done then with this over here I had this over here actually to shovel the manure around but to be fair we can do a few first few loads at the biogas plant while we're up here but I think I'm going to get a conveyor belt with over 300,000 litres to shift doing it 4,000 litres at a time is going to take quite a while hmm. right on the back we've got the water container bought that from the sheep that's, I think that's where I left it last we'll come through under the railway just here And let's get these sorted. Bella vino italiano. I hope that's right. <laughs> Probably not knowing me. That's white grapes on there, isn't it? So it looks like it. Yep. Awesome. Loving it. So there we go. Two small vineyards in. Now, obviously, we can't harvest these. I know some of the maps um, that have them available with the vineyards and with the browd and that kind of stuff that we've got modded. Uh, is that Black Eyes modding? I think it's Black Eyes modding, isn't it? Um, these obviously just pay out per hour. But it's a nice nod towards what we've got coming, I think. And it, it fits the area well. It's perfect for what we need. Plus, I've got them now, but the bit for potatoes and, you know, and our white grapes just here. Marvellous. Right, so let's go and grab this. So we've got one contract partially delivered. And then for that contract to be complete, we just need to get our premium horse feed back. The vineyards on a contract, they're just something I wanted to do. Um, and then as far as potatoes, we'll get those in the ground. That is a, a contract we've got coming up. But for Zach, he needs power at the biogas plant. So putting the silage in is going to be the start of that process for him. So, I mean, that's a kind of ongoing contract, but technically a contract complete. And then, uh, yeah, I'm just thinking, I should have used this silo here, shouldn't I? Because we've got to sell it, or put it into this one here, which actually is quite... I don't know if that can reach. I wonder if I can put it in from the top. So this is where I'm, I, I get a little bit puzzled. I'm not puzzled, but... Well, yeah, puzzled, I guess. You've got that one there, Biogas Italiano, uh, Italia. Uh, that one there... No, that's my vehicle. That's Vendita Faraggi. I guess it's on here. Come on. So BGA Italia, Biogas Italia, and then Vendita Faraggi. Now Vendita Faraggi is for bales. 
BJ Italia just takes silage. Biogas Italia takes other things as well. But I don't know if it's the same cell point. That's the thing. So this is the first time we're trying this here. So if we come round up here, we've got this. So we've got the cell point here off the railway. We've got a cell point there. Does that feed into that? I mean, technically, we've got a pipe that comes from there and up into there. That goes into there. So it should, shouldn't it? I'm just worried if I put it in the top one up there, I'm not going to get digestate. I suppose I'll do a test load. If I if I do get um, a conveyor and bring my lorry over, so if I dump the manure in the field, bring the lorry over, fill the back of the lorry, I suppose, does it have on here as well? See, it doesn't have the digestate thing, does it? So I don't know if digestate is building up. I assume so. So what we'll do, I'll grab a conveyor belt. Now I'm going to be using the one from the is it root crop silage silo set by Top Ace 888. And it will allow you to pick up from the ground. So if I put some in here first, then we put some in from the top, and we'll see if there's a difference. Although I don't have a I don't have a tanker yet to collect it, do I? So I can't even check. Will that reach? I don't know if it will. Oh, no, maybe. I don't think it will, you know. No. No. That's very high, isn't it? Now I wonder, if I tip it in at the top... <laughs> it's just, we'll, we'll try all avenues. Is it going to appear on both of those screens, or just the one up here? So what we'll do... So it's appearing on that one. Is it appearing on this one? No. Oh. It should still be paid out at midnight though, shouldn't it? Because as we're putting in, we're not being paid. So I don't think from here I can't reach over and put it into there. This is a bit of a dilemma, isn't it? Having spent all that time getting all that silage, I don't want to put it all in that top one and then get no digestate. But that, like I say, just logic for me dictates <laughs> that because these pipes, that's where the thing is, that pipe comes from there and goes up into the digestate. Or into the digester. But as far as I'm aware, this is the tank that we collect from but I don't have a tanker to check that yet ha <laughs> right maybe that's what I'm gonna to need to do on the start of the next episode then we'll get our tanker sorted we'll get a tanker over I think for the time being I'm gonna empty the lorry out We'll go and get a conveyor and we'll get at least one full load and we'll tip it into there. And I think that's probably where we're going to end it. <laughs> end this episode. Yeah. Right, I've leased and not bought the Grimmer SL8022 Quantum. This will pick up from the ground. I have got the belt turned on. What I need to do is lift that up. So we can load into the trailer. Now I'm going to do one full load of the trailer and put it in at the top where we just did it from the bucket. Then I'm going to load the trailer up again, but then move the conveyor and put the conveyor into the regular cell point. And then what we'll do is unload onto the ground in front of the conveyor. So we'll have one from the top, one from the side. Then the start of the next episode, we'll get a tanker and then we can check. How am I going to know?
that it's all gone into one or not. Right, start the next episode, we'll do the second part. So the first part we'll set at the top. Start the next episode, we'll get a tanker, we'll check the digest date. Then we'll do what I just said. We'll do another full load on the trailer. We'll move the conveyor belt over and load it into the other one and see if the digest date level goes up. Or we might find a start of the next episode. We'll go to check the digest date and there is, there is none at all, in which case then we might have a little bit of a problem. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, what we'll do now is go and grab the lorry. Swing round some facing the other way. So this should load up fairly quickly, I don't know. Oh, I've got way too high on that. This is a fairly low trailer, isn't it, to be fair? Okay. I don't think I've ever worked at a biogas plant or with a biogas plant that's got so many. Yeah, because we've got a, there's a, a pond. I suppose it's a pond, isn't it? There's one here as well, isn't there? Does one feed one and one feed the other? We'll have to check them all. Like I say, normally there's one place you put in, one place you take out. <laughs> so it's a bit of an interesting one. Now we're looking, I think we're full. Right, turn the belt off, turn the engine off. We'll come back to that. Yep, 45,000 litres. So, to end this episode then, let's take this up the top, we'll dump the full load, and then start the next episode, like I said, we'll get a tanker, tanker trailer, something along those lines, and let's see if we can't work this out. Um, I think I'm going to use the liquid one I used before, the 48, uh, the, from Rowdy Christie. So like I say, we are now helping Zach because it means they've now got power. And we are also helping Starless Limited. Uh, once we know where our digestate is, we've got to provide them with 64,000 litres of digestate but as far as this episode goes we're done hope you've enjoyed it if you have please give us a like if you don't subscribe yet please do if you want to leave a comment feel free and if you want to share this video then please be my guest whatever you should choose to do thanks for watching